Gonna break it down, break it down, break it down Gonna break it down, break it down, break it down What up, commentarians? We are on episode number 17. I am Alan I. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling? What up, what up, what up? Who is that? Is this what we doing? When did you fall in love with hip hop? <laughs> How y'all doing, people? How y'all doing? What's I'm up? giving you some theme music, I man. appreciate it. Hey, Shot, I see what you did there. That was kind of like the uh, uh, the Pharrell, <laughs> the, the beatboxer, the... <laughs> Dougie, Dougie. <laughs> Yo, what? I didn't even know you knew how to do that. My Dougie? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I'm I'm not, um, you know, I was a dude on the bus that used to do the beats for everybody because I can't rap. Yeah. So I was the one banging on the window in the seats with a pencil. That, that was me. Yeah. I could rap a little bit, but I, I wasn't good. You, you was around the cypher? I, I was the rapper. Oh, Jesus. I used to want to be a rapper. So in high school, like when I. What? <laughs> she started laughing, so this is a good story. Yeah, let's go. I <laughs> legit used to want to be a rapper. So in high school, like at lunch, I would like join the people that was rapping. I couldn't rap for shit, but I really legitimately wanted to be a rapper. My first two years of high school, that was my thing. Like, what was your What was your rap name? I I really didn't have one. Questions that need answered. I just wanted to be a rapper. So I was like the the person who made everything rhyme. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like when people was joning, I would take the Jones and make it into a rap. I could join my ass off, but I yeah. couldn't rap. Yeah. So I, like, I was terrible. I but my first two years at Normandy High School, I was definitely trying to be a rapper. Normandy. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't have thick of Normandy. Things. Shout out to Normandy, St. Louis, Mo, Normandy, Missouri, whatever y'all want to call y'all sales. I don't know. Um, unincorporated St. Louis County. Unincorporated. Is it, it is still St. Louis County, <laughs> ain't it? That's crazy because normally like be hood in a couple of spots and then, right. like, it's kind of cool. Then it's Bell Nor. Yep. Then it, yeah. And then, Pagedale, like, yeah. And Pagedale is, I don't know. Pagedale just, I don't know. I don't know. Shout out to Pagedale. Page Elm, Elmwood, ain't that what they call them? Elmwood. Yep. Yep. Pagedale, all that. Shout out to y'all too, man. Um, last episode, last episode, we had, we had a couple of, we had a question in particular, we had a couple of questions and shout out to everybody that's, uh, sticking with us, listening to us. We appreciate you. We are back at Kazi Society. Yep. Yep. Jamie, yep. what's happening? Shout out to the, uh, SOLC network. Um, we appreciate y'all, Daryl and, uh, you know, Matt, what's happening? What's what happening? Up? SOLC. And shout out to the world for listening. We appreciate it. Um, we we had a little question. We we so recap on last episode. Um, we we were getting into um, some some toxicity and things of that nature. Narcissism, narcissism, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and you know, kind of sometimes it feels like some of our stuff goes together, but it's like completely different thoughts. We were talking about like you know people taking off and characteristics and signs. And did you all get a chance to check out? Side note: Did you all check out Daryl's uh, Mike Checker? interview with a uh, old boy from dc i did with the therapist yeah i did yeah. very very informative like you yeah. never realized right. that you're possibly could be a narcissist have narcissistic tendencies or right. have dealt with or are dealing with a narcissist mm -hmm. until you hear situations like daryl's um episodes yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was really good if you had a chance make sure y'all check out mike check oh man <coughs> daryl swiss Holding it down. That was a great episode. You so, can catch that on the SOLC Network page. So be sure. SOLC. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so be, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, what was that question? What was all right. Question? So Big Time Raw asked, well, he said, great episode. I have a question for y'all. But how do you get over someone when they move on super fast and for no reason? All right. Chad, you. Yeah, because you. it's always a reason. It's always a reason. Even if you think it's not a reason, it's a reason. No disrespect, big time, raw. It's always a reason. Me personally, somebody moves on super fast. You know, man, man I'm assuming this is a brother. Big time, raw. Big time, raw. <laughs> Salute. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 a tough name, man. In that could that could have been a Harlem rap name. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. That would have raw. a different connotation. But big time, raw, man. You know, personal opinion. When it's over, it's over. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as it's over, it's over. And you, I would say, don't do yourself 
the 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 nightmarish drama move of trying to figure out the other person's move, how fast they do something, how fast they, you know, I would say that first and foremost. Secondly, you don't do anything. If you got to do something, you don't do anything. Sometimes, I mean, brother, I've been in situations where, I mean, a couple situations where the man was waiting in the wing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. as soon as, soon as she left, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But women no. leave for opportunity. Mm, say more. So I think when a woman, but I'm, I'm assuming that the relationship was over from mm. his comment. So be. right. women go where sometimes opportunity is, be it an opportunity for happiness, mm. be it an opportunity for financially financial stability, be it an opportunity for better dick. Like women move on for opportunity. Right. And it doesn't, that's not, saying nothing about finances in particular you know women move on for the opportunity of a lot of different things and i think when a woman moves on because typically it's a little bit harder for women to move on than it is for a man unless you're dealing with a narcissistic female mm. that's my opinion no 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 no. no. I, I, I do I'm also saying that's agree deep. That's deep. that mm. most of the time there is a dude that she's was already dealing with just the same as with men. Right. When men jumped to the women, the woman that he told you not to worry about, he <laughs> was, he had been fucking with her Yeah. and she was just waiting. They were making plans. Yeah. But <laughs> for a more defined answer, mm -hmm. if you're dealing with a narcissist, a narcissist is going to move on immediately, regardless. They're going to move on, whatever. If it's just the case of somebody else moving on, like Rashad said, you don't, do anything okay. you heal you work on yourself and then eventually your time will come don't follow them on social media right don't follow the new person on social media right don't start doing all that stalking shit i can tell this dick bigger than mine by his neck don't, well he got more money than me <laughs> don't don't call her don't chase her you as hard as it may be and this is for males and females alike and sometimes i have to take my own advice yeah, going on about your fucking business just, just going you. on because mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, them leaving and moving on was a blessing for you. Right. Let them be somebody else's fucking nightmare and they headache. And sometimes, and just like how you said, some people, because not just women. I know you were speaking from a woman's perspective, but not just women. People sometimes they they may be in the thick of things, things are not working or whatever, and they're already being, <clears throat> you know, opportunistic. I hope I said that word right. Mm -hmm. while they're still in a situation. So it do look like a, like my man Nino Brown would say, grapes, uh, bigger dick, bigger <laughs> bankroll over there, or she got this or he got that or whatever. But you know what's funny? I think, you know, AI, if they did a statistic on this, I think, I, I think it would be a high number of people who do that. They, jump, they think the grass is green on the other side. Then they recognize, you know, that shit is fertilizer with no growth, mm -hmm. then they try to come right back. That happens. And that happens between men and women. Um, yeah. Like, but yeah, it definitely happens. I mean, it, it's, I, I am generally um, a proponent of trying to work your, your situation out unless it's just negative, toxic, abusive, whatever the case right. may be. Like, but if you can work your situation, I'm always going to tell my guys like, Hey bro, like at least give it a shot. And like I said, unless it's like abusive or something like that. Right. But, well, here's the thing. When somebody wants to leave or walk away from you, you have to let them go. Yep. Because what we learn is that your destiny is not tied to anybody who wanted to leave you or Preach. anybody who has not. left you. It's you not know? tied to anybody but you. Exactly. So you sit, you have your moment, you you feel your feelings, and then you pick yourself up. And one thing about life is that shit goes on. Yeah. You, know you know what? You know what? You just got to move on. Real quick, an elder said this. I'm gonna use a, I'm going to use a very bad word. I didn't understand this when I was younger, but you could tie it into what you just said. He said, young man, when you when you when you're getting the the the, the ass, he said, the P-U-S-S-Y is never as good as you think it is. And I was just like, man, this elder tripping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn, I'm like, it's good anytime I can get it. Being a younger man mm -hmm. in my 20s, the older I got, I knew what he meant. Tying it into what B saying relationships <clears throat> excuse me 
when we're trying to hold on to the toxicity and all this other stuff and wondering who knew and all this other stuff, times, you know, and I'm going to say this very carefully, when things are ending, sometimes we're not focusing on why it's ending. We're going right back to what we thought we really liked about it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Absolutely. You got to let it go. When it's over, it's over. And that's for both parties, you know? No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I, I mean, I think D hit it on the head. Like, mm-hmm. your destiny's not tied to anybody that want to take off. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's it. Um, your destiny, your destiny. Your, a relationship is really a reflection of you. Big time raw, I have a challenge for you. What's your real name, dog? <laughs> These internet trolls. We we man. need to know. I we we need to know. Me- message us. Send it. us send us a message on the low so we can know so we can make sure you're not a catfish. Right. I think it's like Derek or Sheldon. Right. No, it's probably somebody that know one of us. Yeah. I, I bro, anytime you get those names, dog. Big like, time raw. Big time raw and. And it's probably not even a guy. Honey, be smooth and all that. A sister man. named Big Time Raw. They trolling. Trolling, man. Catfish, bro. Well, if you catfishing with a name like Big Time Ma, <laughs> I ask AI how many kids you got. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate the love. We appreciate definitely. the questions for sure. So if you have a question for us or you want us to discuss something, definitely just, just keep hitting us up. We appreciate yeah, that. You can hit us on the YouTube. You can hit us uh email, commentary podcast. No, it's commentary show at gmail.com. <laughs> My bad, y'all. Commentary <laughs> show. Commentary show at gmail.com. Um, you know, move, moving on, uh, I, I was uh, talking to someone this past week and uh, had a conversation. I was like, man, the police ain't killed a black man in a minute. And lo and behold, Dang. on December 4th, hashtag Casey Goodson. K C C A S E Y Goodson. G O O D S O N was shot and killed by the Columbus, Ohio police. Um, details are, are kind of sketchy at the moment. Um, appears that there was a fugitive task force um, co-oping with the local police in the area that Casey resided. Um, Casey had nothing to do with the investigation that was going on in the area at the time. Police said they saw him drive by waving a handgun they pursued him. What happens next is kind of, it, it's sketchy because the family is uh, disputing this account, but the police said that Casey uh, got out of the vehicle um, and they opened fire. The family is saying that Casey was shot while in the vehicle and he was shot in the back. Um, ultimately, he uh, succumbed to his injuries and he died. This happened on December 4th in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> the the NBA wore all these jerseys and had all these messages and there was no justice for Brianna. They they took a, a, a stand or, you know, had a walkout or a strike or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll tell everybody right here, I did not support that gesture, even though I understood. Um, I just think that, you know, there has to be some sort of plan in place when things like that happen. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm not out here. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to go to work tomorrow because I'm going to go. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I know that we put, we have a tendency to put celebrities, athletes, entertainers on these pedestals and we all, oh, they need to do this, this day. Listen, man. These guys have partnerships, sponsorships, endorsements, and contracts, more importantly, that say if you do not fulfill this obligation, you're not going to get paid and you could possibly get terminated. So um, I know a lot of people really did, um, you know, for lack of better choice of words, for me right now, they they fucked with that movement, right? And and that's cool. I I have no objection to that. And I salute those guys for, for taking that stand. But you know, these hashtags continue to grow. So, so Kamala, Joe, like <laughs> y'all talking about 10 grand off these student loans, which that's a whole nother episode that we going to talk about that. Right. What are y'all going to do about, you know, police accountability? And, and I mean that as a whole, I'm not talking about white officers, black officers, Asian, Arab, whatever. There has to be some type of accountability. Police cannot just gun people down, man. And then, walk because they have this immunity that it it just doesn't work that way it does but you know it should not work that way um any thoughts from from you all 
I'm tired. Yeah. And I think that's the consensus of just about every everybody. We're fucking tired. Um, when is the narrative going to truly change? Where it's, you have a vile, I mean, yes, there are viable reasons to shoot somebody as a police officer. Absolutely. There, there are viable reasons to shoot somebody. But do you really have to shoot to kill if your life is not truly in danger? No, you do not. This is the conversation that we continue to have. And I was on the um, the interview that Jamie actually did with um, Tashar Jones. Is that her name? Tashar yeah, Jones. Jones. Okay. Tashar. Who's running for mayor soon mm-hmm. of city of St. Louis. And she spoke to the effect that every call doesn't require an armed officer response. And I think that's part of the problem. A lot of these police officers now at this point are afraid to do their fucking job. So when they come in, in contact with somebody who is licensed to carry, who they feel fits the description of somebody who's going to be intimidating or a perpetrator, their first thought is, oh, my God, I have to save my own life. If that's the case, you shouldn't be a police officer because the numbers and the bodies are continuing to pile up and there's no accountability. Mm-hmm. There's absolutely no fucking accountability. Yeah. Like you said, the cops that shot Breonna Taylor, still free. They're not in jail. No. The officer who was kneeling on George Floyd's neck. He just made bond. He, he made bond. Mm-hmm. So he's out. He was allowed to leave the city, I believe, mm-hmm. that he lived in. They said for his safety. For his safety. Mm-hmm. Wow. Nobody even fucking knows where <clears throat> Darren Wilson is. He's in Houston. Oh, okay. Living his life. Yep. There's no accountability, but when we go out and we protest or when we say we're not going to work, we we are held accountable. We get arrested for protesting peacefully. Mm-hmm. So there's no accountability, and until somebody does some type of police reform, it's going to continue. It's never, it's never going to stop. I am so sick and tired of seeing a black person with a hashtag in front of their name Yes. And the word killed by the cops. Yes. Sick of it. Yes. Well, um, mm. yes. I think uh, we did. I, I think we did great with our answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, Yo, you don't I, gotta, uh, you I, know, I, I, I'm just going to say, I think the safest thing that I could say is probably the saddest thing I could say is the black struggle in all shapes, forms and fashions. The black struggle is the American hustle. One hundred and ten damn percent, bro. Like and you that. heard it here first with <laughs> Harlem B, my man AI and Rashad. So yes. before y'all put that on the shirt, just show us love. It's the truth, man. Yeah, it's the truth. And I, you know, my mom always used to say, if you ain't had nothing nice or incriminating, <laughs> non-incriminating don't to say, say yeah. don't say it. All I'm gonna say is my heart is with their brother and yeah. his family and the For brothers sure. and the sisters, and you know, everything comes with a receipt. Yeah. Just as much as I'll say. And in 2020, if we ain't learned nothing else, things are changing. Yeah. Sometimes it's gone, it's, it ha- it's a natural progression. Sometimes it's violent, chaotic. You know? Yeah. Black struggle, American hustle. Yeah. All I mean, right. That's all I got to say. I've been to Columbus a couple of times. It, it feels like struggle. <laughs> I mean, that's no diss to the city. Yeah, I've been I, I simply mean that in the terms of, you know, you know how St. Louis feels as a black person. Columbus has does that feel. Does it feel like struggle? Yeah. Or does it feel like hustle? St. Louis, I mean, you know. like hustle. We, we hustle, right? But okay. you St. know. St. Louis are hustlers, boy. You know how St. Louis feel when, you you know, you're like, I'm not riding through the county. You know that feel. Oh, like boy. It, it, uh, that's okay. how Which is okay. crazy because it does feel different as soon as you cross them county lines. Yeah. Gentrification. Yeah. <laughs> but when you ride through the city, you feel, you know, you're fine. Y'all got to well, slow depending down. Depending on where you go in the city, because the gentrification definitely take it. Sh- old North don't even look like the old North no more. Yeah. I'm going to get some new uh, numbers on my address. The gentrification numbers, you know, with the, uh, don't have like the English font. Like Are you going to get, yeah. Are you gonna get the, lights The, the contemporary too? font. Yeah. Are you going to get I'm your gonna, address in lights? Yeah. 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 We, I'm going to get a gentrification we address. We do that in University City. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Listen, y'all. It was uh, one week ago today. In Dallas, Texas, that a uh, restaurant owner 
Big booty hoes. Cussed oh, out a, uh, <laughs> a room full of black men and women in the name of respectability. <laughs> Stupid, you know, um, true kitchen and cocktails. The uh, gimmick. Last Sunday. Um, What's the name of it? True Kitchen and Cocktails. Cocktails with a K. So that that's first and foremost to let you know there should be twerking going on there. Um, I, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with that. <laughs> okay. Kitchen and cocktails. <laughs> you know, is it Ruth's Chris Kitchen and Cocktail? No, it's just it's Ruth's, Ruth's Chris. Chris right? That's right. <laughs> is it Red Lobster and Cocktail? No, it's just Red Lobster. Is it Capital Grill and Cocktails? No, it's just Capital Grill. Is it Miami Grill and Cocktails? Is it Miami Grill? <laughs> No, all jokes aside, um, I had a fun week with this one earlier on Facebook and YouTube, not YouTube, uh, Twitter. And I uh, definitely stopped by your Instagram. Page. Oh, man. Page I was, was, you see what I said? I said, I see what you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're not familiar with the situation, which everybody probably is at this point, um, there's a couple of different accounts. So, um, what we do have confirmed is that the owner of the restaurant um, was talking to three tables of women um, he, at least three times he spoke to them regarding, uh, quote unquote, their behavior. Um, apparently they were twerking. Um, it's, it's rumored and not rumored. Allegedly, they were standing on the furniture. There is no footage of anyone standing on furniture at this point. I have looked everywhere and there is nothing to confirm that anyone at any point in time stood on the furniture aside from the word of the owner. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that he's a liar. I'm not saying that by any means. But uh, <clears throat> they probably was standing on that man furniture. Cause let me tell you, <sighs> a good cocktail and some music <laughs> will have you standing on furniture. Ask me how I know. How you know? Cause back in the day, I used to be all on everybody fucking furniture in the, in, the, in, <laughs> in the club. In the club. Oh man! So they probably was standing on that That's man. Furniture. Club, which which though. had the stand on furniture acceptable. insurance? You know what I'm saying? So that yeah. The club, like, the club is it, that's a different setting here. The club. It's still alcohol and music. It is. It is. And and we're gonna touch that right. Um, the owner's name is Kevin Kelly. Um, hence the kitchen and cocktails. Maybe kitchen and right. cocktails. Hey, K-K-K. you might be right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I see what you yeah. did there, Kevin. I see. I see. Yeah. Um. But he came and spoke to these young ladies, and um, I guess he had gotten fed up, and he came out. He stopped the music, and he gave. I saw him say, said, turn it off. Man. Turn it, turn He said, DeWan, turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> DeWan. <laughs> so, now, uh, now, hold on, hold on, AI. Now, now this is more because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of making a little tally. Okay. So you got Kitchen and Cocktails with two Ks off of what his name is. Mm-hmm. That's the twerk side. Cocktails. And food, that's the twerk side. So I'm trying to see, should twerk, should not twerk. You got a DJ named DeWine. DJ, and he didn't even call him by a DJ name. He called him what he knew him. <laughs> yeah. He like, so you personally he said pissed. his name. He right. Pissed. So that equals a twerk point. So we like at three or four twerk points versus nine twerk points. I think I think so. I think okay. so. I think so. We keeping twerk points. Um, as a business owner, as a business owner myself, I completely understand twerk insurance that you <laughs> Operate on and set the expectations for your space. If you don't want people standing That's on right. your furniture, you can tell those heathens or whatever you want to call them, those harlots, those harlots to get down. Jezebel. You can tell them. You can tell them. And, and as a consumer, you should respect um, the space and and the expectations of the business owner and the establishment. That's I, right. I, that, I, that's I totally overall agree. point. That is a that is a solid damn point. I, I agree. Now, I agree. I don't think he was in the wrong. For, for, you know, having expectations for his establishment. I feel a butt. Um, yes, there's a mm-hmm. big butt. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right, you see what I do? do, do. <laughs> we'll be back after these commercial breaks. <laughs> um, on the flip side of that same coin, mm-hmm. number one, you have a DJ. Okay, that's number one because mm-hmm. DJs set the expect, not expectation, but the mood. And you being a dope DJ for, yourself. So me being a DJ, and I've DJed at a lot of restaurants, lounges, kitchens, cocktails. Uh, I could go on. I've and, been doing and, and, and Negro late lunches or Negro late breakfasts. Breakfasts known as brunches. Brunch. I've, I've never done a brunch that there wasn't <laughs> twerking. I'll be honest. I've never DJed a brunch that there wasn't twerking. The the whole trap brunch thing right. when that came. I was like, bro, we've been doing that. It was just brunch. Like you well, know what I'm saying. Obviously, you've never been to Bristol's for brunch because there's no twerking there's, and there's no DJ. There's no booty and 
biscuits. Booty no booty and bacon. Booty and bacon at Bristol's. There's no at booty brunch. by the buffet. Okay. There's no no. It, Be clear. Waffles and winches. Waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Pancakes and well, we won't. You better, you better not. We will not. There are some words we will mimosas not. Mimosas and monkeys. Ooh, that, hey, mimosas hey. and monkey. I like yeah, that. No. It's toast and twerking. Toast and twerking. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, look, we. <laughs> This commentary stupid. is we're going to become promoters when the quarantine is over. Okay? I swear. The pandemic. Don't yeah. bite our shit. Yeah. If you bite we this sue. shit, we have it right here. Bro. We sue. I'm going to the Supreme Court on we're your We're going to invite our guest to toast and twerking toast and toast twerking and twerk. yes and yeah extra butter with my bitches <laughs> <laughs> buttering bitches <laughs> 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 okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. So you was making no, up. man. Um, no, the DJ. He has a DJ named Dewine. Named Dewine. His government name is Dewine. We know that. What is his right. DJ name? I don't. I didn't even know. He called the man Dewine. You can hear that loud and clear in the video. So I don't even know. What his look, Dewine. Look, I'm sorry. A DJ named Dewine. He coming for one purpose and one purpose. One only. purpose only. You already know what it is. I ain't even got to say. So as a DJ, is there a certain type of music? That you should play at brunch. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. Are you supposed to play the baby or Sade? Stallion? That, that's what I was saying. I would, you know, if I go to brunch, I maybe want to hear a little Sade. You know, I want to hear instrumentals. I don't. I, I don't know if I want to hear trap music. Um, at, we at are a tribal people. Okay. Okay. We are a tribal people. Okay. And and you know, let's be real here. As soon as we hear some kick drums and some bass. With a little snare, we we finna get turned up. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of like a. I just thought of a something like if we do our thing, it's like you know how B said big booty holes, huh, yeah. yeah, you know we could be like sausage and biscuits come with it. <laughs> <laughs> See, sausage you know, we, and biscuits. We, <laughs> we, just, we getting ready to make some money, boy. I've right just never been to a brunch with 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 twerking. I mean, and rap music. So maybe I'm going to the wrong brunch. You are. Okay. You are. Okay. The So people are trying to make the argument, and, and I'm going to finish my points, but people are yes, trying sir. to make the arguments that um, just because there's a DJ and just because there's twerk music playing does not mean that you should have to dance and twerk and beat up. Have some respect for yourself, young lady. So sidebar on that, first and foremost, twerking is not disrespect to any woman, Okay. So half of you Negroes and women will go and let a stripper sit on your lap with a bare kitty cat on your and face. you not tripping. So I don't want to hear nothing about being respected, respectable, or nothing, okay? Yeah. I don't want to hear it. I yeah. don't want to hear it. Herpy mustache and shit. <laughs> Herpy stash. This takes me to my second point. We are a tribal people. Yes. We hear some bass, some kicks, some snares. We're going to dance. Now... The possibility of that happening increases by 10 if I got Duce, Patron, oh Grey Goose, God. or something in Please my system. Please don't say no cognac. System. Cognac, they don't know how to act. Okay, now this is, a, this is a nice establishment by all accounts that I've heard. This is a nice establishment. Um, What is it, Kevin's Kitchen and Cocktails? Ke Ke taste, Kitchen, kitchen true, and Cocktails. True, true, true. True okay. Kitchen and Cocktails. Okay. Yes. True. This is a this is a nice whoa, whoa, whoa. establishment. T R U T R U E T R U. -E. Well, true religion, man. I mean, true come on. kitchen. You know that equals twerking. I think people still wear true, true religion. Uh, I never was into it myself. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I, I used to know somebody that worked there. I don't know if she still works. You know there. what? Big bottom jeans. I'm being serious. I would. I could ask. I mean, well, I can't ask, but if you know, you know. Um, I think he's saying less. Yeah. Anyway, then. but if if there's alcohol involved, um. From what I've heard, and, and not even from what I've heard, because I don't know anybody that was there, but from what I've read, um, food was taking a little long to come out. Mm. Appetite for disaster. And there's liquor flowing, and there's a DJ playing, throw that ass in a circle. Ah, oh, man, come on, man. Close case. That's all you have to case. say. Because I, listen, listen, listen. Never mind. Let's just, <laughs> you know, side note about that song. Closed. Everybody, as far as the ladies, the ladies, shout out to the ladies. That's Rashad for the ladies. Everybody can't throw that ass in a circle. It doesn't matter if you could throw that ass in a circle or not. That song. It do. Will, no, it doesn't. Yes, it do. It does not. It do. Because if you can't throw your ass in a circle, you need to throw hey, it in a square. Quick sidebar. Did you all see Megan's new twerk video last night? 
Nah, no. Yeah, it. y'all got to go ahead and uh-uh. yeah, jump I'm, on I'm, that, dog. I'm going to let Megan be Megan. I, I feel like <laughs> there are certain songs that come on that you have to dance to. Throw that ass in a circle. Or a square. And booty me down. Booty me down. Yeah. Or it. Like, you, you have to. You don't have a choice. I just feel like at a tasteful brunch, throw that ass in a circle is not on the playlist. Well, that's why he told Dewan to cut that shit off. The, I, I agree. You shouldn't be playing throw that ass in a circle at brunch. So, uh, so case in point, Alan, mm-hmm. booty and biscuits, <laughs> booty and biscuits. <laughs> does not go. Okay. It, it doesn't. You shouldn't be you sh- you shouldn't be throwing your ass in a circle at brunch. But if it came on, I might you know, it's fine, it's fine. But I guarantee you, booty and biscuits would sell out every weekend. It would, it would, and and you know, to to my third point, um, this is my personal perspective. I think that uh, Mr. Kelly should have um, addressed his DJ, and I, by address, I don't mean chew him out or anything. I mean he say, hey, bro, right, kind of. Cool it down a little cool bit. Cool it down. Um, in my own business every day, this is the motto that I go by. What would Apple do? And by Apple, I mean Apple Inc., MacBook, iPhone, everything, mm. right? This is this is my own personal plot. This is how I handle business daily. Because Apple don't ask us shit. They yeah. just do. They just do. <laughs> they just do. I twerk. They don't address us. They don't do anything. When Apple said, you know what, we finna get rid of the headphone jack and Millions and millions of people were upset, like, oh, my God. Right. But the line was out the damn door that morning to get that new phone. Then Apple said, you know, we're going to give you motherfuckers some AirPods. AirPods. And Negroes went and oh, ain't like got AirPods, 150. 150. Yeah. Everybody went and got AirPods. Um, when Apple said that we're no longer going to put disc on our computers. Yeah, I am a Mac man. They didn't ask us anything. They said no CD drives, drives, nothing, right? They just did it. And that's how I run my business every day. Like, you don't, your consumer will adapt. Like, I I think, I I know that that sounds arrogant and kind of assholey, but your consumer will adapt. You have no choice. Because if your business is not adapting daily, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be Barnes and Noble. You're going to be Toys R Us. You're going to be Best Buy. Blockbuster video. Blockbuster video. And did you know they had an opportunity to partner with uh, Netflix back in the day? <sighs> and they said, no, we're doing fine. We're doing Why fine. Why would we do that? These big ass cassette tapes or VHS tapes, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I said that to say, um, you know, I think that Mr. Kelly should have uh, had a, a, a brief conversation with the DJ and say, hey, hey. bro, you know, this is not what we're, we're really trying to do here. Um, simmer it down. And uh, I think that... Uh, and he shouldn't, I mean, I, I get where he going, you know, being a little older, speaking to the younger ladies, but man, you can't give them a damn sermon. Yeah, he not their dad. I mean, Not their dad. They you know, you, you can speak your about business. your establishment. And if you knew to tell DJ DeWine, stop playing the music if they twerking on furniture and stuff. Hey, sisters, 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 you can dance. We, 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 know we don't do all that in here. It should have been a one and story. done. Because another one solution and done. I agree. is, hey, ladies, I'm going to cash y'all out. I don't want y'all to stay gone, but... Get gone. It ain't vibing right now. Right. So that that's another solution. But man, addressing a room full of grown people and I am seventy five percent of my consumers are ladies and I want them to have respect for themselves. And how are they gonna respect themselves if the men aren't respect? Define respect at a brunch that's playing. Throw that ass in a circle with an owner that's cussing out people in the name <laughs> of respectability. Yeah. Man. Please tell me somebody. Hit me on the damn I- email in the comments. <laughs> how do you cuss people out in the name of respectability? Of respect. How do you do that? Yeah, that's a really good point. I did not look at that. I, I really want to know. know. The how more do you, you do? know. How do you do that? It's like a star just shot across the room. <laughs> the more you know. Shwing. Shwing. No, I really want to know. Um, I mean, you know, give us your brunch experiences. Are, are you a trap bruncher? Or are you a, you know, because everybody, you know. I mean, but trap brunch, like dope and donuts, my nigga, this is what we. People, I don't, I don't know. I feel like people are starting I to get more money like now. I like to eat my grits in peace. I don't want nobody gang banging on bacon <laughs> while I'm trying to sip my mimosa. Like I just, I don't. I I'm don't want to. I don't want to be. You know, because when certain songs come on, you turn into somebody else. I mean, I don't yeah, want I mean, no ass. I, 
next to my hash. Yeah, you know I don't. I don't want to be selling drugs while I'm sipping on you know some hot tea and having toast. I j- I just don't. I love it. I love it. I, I mean, just, but I just don't. You you kind of know the venues or the promoters or of the course. spaces that go for this. So Yo, you know you're not gonna go to. You know Let based me get a on you, you know based <laughs> on the DJ is how I feel. I, I you, agree. You know based yeah. on the DJ. I know that there are certain DJs and I know that they have a certain catalog of songs that they that they like to play so if right. this is the dj for this particular brunch then i know it just might be some ass thrown in the circle while i'm trying to just enjoy an omelet or some eggs benedict i don't mind I, eggs benedict <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be on the trap brunch menu eggs benedict eggs keep, benedict keep, <laughs> keep the salt Oh, oh, the salt. <laughs> hi yo. Damn. Don't come with that new basketball dick, fellas. Don't come Ooh. with the uh, after the gym dick. You got to clean it up. You None gotta of clean that. It up. Clean it up, fellas. No. Oh, my God. Sodium sack. No, man. Hit us about your brunch experiences. Tell us what you think about brunch. Do you feel like Kevin Kelly was um, appropriate or right or, you know, um, within his means to, uh, well, he's definitely within his means, but, you know, within, within a just a, a good gesture of, of what he did. Is there another way he could have handled it? In your opinion, this is all in your opinion, okay? You don't have to agree with me, disagree. Um, I've given you my thoughts. So hit us up and let us know what you think. Um, Bitches and Canisius. And then, oh, quick, just side, sidebar on, on that note. Um, <laughs> Okay. Oh. She could Harlem couldn't handle it, bro. Something's really wrong with these two. Y'all I, don't y'all don't even no, understand. Look, look, look. I'm a marketer and a designer and a creator. I mean, I love all of this because we probably came up with like ten ideas that all three of us could get paid off. We, we gotta do we this. We gotta do this. Yes. We have a whole menu. The biscuits and bitches. That was genius. Biscuits and bitches. Yeah, booties bitches. And bacon. Biscuits and bitches. Yeah. Booty and bacon. Yeah, you said booty, booty and, and bacon. bacon. Oh. Is that gonna be like biscuits and bacon, like the booty? I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking of being. I would, you know, you know, yeah. what we say with waffles, tatas and frittatas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. We said waffles and winches. Hey, we you know, if y'all <laughs> take this, holes and breakfast suing. burritos. Oh, holes <laughs> and burritos. Yeah, <laughs> we can keep this thing going. I know what we could rhyme with do say, but uh, I don't like oh, that word. The do say, say. Give me some of that Usai, Usai. Yeah, Kev, uh, Kevin Kelly has Duce smoothies or, or uh, Yo, no, hold on. Hold the fuck. Okay, man. You haven't seen this, bro? Hold on, hold on. No, Somebody no, no, put no. up a picture, you, man. You ain't even got to show me. See, the this whole home. argument is now moot. It's null and void It's null at and this void. point, yeah. Duce smoothies, player? He has Duce smoothies, bro. They come in a Duce bottle, like the small joint. They come in a small Duce bottle. The little joint and they are serving them up, bro. The food doesn't come out on time. Food Shout out to out Brother Kevin. Shout, it is your establishment. All seriousness. It'll work the it is your out. establishment. Establishment, excuse me. And you can, you know what I'm saying? Food don't come out on time. Nope. Do say smoothies. Do say smoothies. A DJ named DeWine. Yeah. What's the next topic? Do say and DeWine. I was just gonna say, let's uh, Yeah, what's um, the next this topic? This story tells itself. Salute, right. Salute to you, brother Kevin, but you know what I'm saying? You 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 did you was playing spades, you didn't make that book. He didn't make that book. He, he over but it is it. respect to your establishment. Yeah. If I'm in Dallas, he says in Dallas? Yes, in Dallas. My sister lives in Dallas. When I I'm not sure what her, area it's in, but it's we in, gonna, it we is gonna in Dallas. We're going to go visit. Me and my sister, shout out to Miko. We're going to go visit you, bro. I haven't been down to Dallas in a minute. I need to go down. My people Me down either. there. So I might be down there for Christmas. We'll see. Um, so on, 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 a, on another note, mm-hmm. um, Mr. Kevin Samuels, the relationship <laughs> coach, uh, he, uh, he went viral this week. Um, for talking to a young lady <laughs> yeah, uh, regarding, uh, I guess, her available options as a uh, mid-30s-year-old woman with a mm. uh, a child. Mm. Have you ever, prior to this, I've listened to his show. He used to do, like, fashion or cologne or something, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I had seen that from, like, way, way right. back when. Right. Oh, uh, he, he, he raw daddy, man. What, what was his perspective? What did he do? What did, just a brief synopsis of what he told this young lady. So basically, um, before you say it, keep in mind she called to get his advice. She did. She, she said did. she respected him and called to get his advice. So we want to make sure that the narrative is clear. She did call. Part. She okay. she did call him. She called into his show or podcast to get his advice on the options that are available to her um, as a mid thirties year old woman that uh, has a child. 
Um, so essentially, when the video, the, the when the viral video clip starts, um, you get he asks her, you hear her asking, he is asking her, what type of man are you looking for? And she's like, I want a man that makes six figures. And he immediately says, uh, ma'am, you don't know any men like that outside of your father, uncles, and relatives. So. <laughs> oh, it get worse. It, gets it get worse. worse. It get we worse. should be able to put a clip in here. We can put the clip in. Oh, that'll be great. Um, you, you know how hard I'm going to put a picture up? She just cut us off and she put a picture <laughs> right. up. Oh, that picture. Your, your picture would be up for probably the next 10 minutes of what you're about to hear, sister. I'm just. So long story short, um. He says, you don't know any men like that, you know, and blah, blah, blah. So she says, well, you know, um, he says to rate yourself, rate yourself. And she says, you know, when I wake up, I'm a five. But when I put myself together, I'm a six. He was like, so you're average at best. Mm. You you just rated yourself at average. He's not saying you rated yourself, but she rated herself as average on a scale of one to ten. And he told her she couldn't use seven, which was hella funny to me. <laughs> so right. He said, rate yourself one to ten. You can't use seven. <laughs> why did he say that too? I was trying to figure it's, out it's why he said safe seven. number. Seven is the safe it's number. The safe number. Okay. So she had to be a eight or better or a or six, six or below. Yeah. Oh man. So um, so he says uh, you know, he goes in and she's like, well, you know. My body's not average, and he like it don't matter, and you know, and and, and big ups to sister, um, she has a pet grooming service, um, she is doing six figures a year off her pet grooming service that she owns, um, and she's black, she's black, but you know, I, I think that uh, so Mr. Samuels goes on, and she says, you know, she feels like she she starts to kind of lead into the fact that. She feels like in order for her to fully be able to submit to a man that he's going to have to be bringing in some bank. So um, Mr. Samuel said, well, shit, you're going to die alone. And, uh, you know, we, we, I don't. <laughs> mm. I, you, you over there thinking. So what, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? Have you seen the full clip yet? I, I have not. Okay. I'm okay. Have to watch it. But I, I feel some type of way because who the fuck is he to tell this woman that her standards are too high. I agree. I, I think that's the misconception of, I think that's something that gets thrown at black women who are single, who aren't possibly at a certain level, um, who, who may have children or whatever the case may be. It's always, you'll never get better than what you've already received. And I think that's a, a very, very um, misogynistic mindset for especially men to have what what's wrong with the woman wanting a man who makes more than her or who makes or who makes that. you know a certain amount of money and can support not only himself but he can also support her should they get to that point in their relationship i try not to go too deep into this because y'all already know where this shit goes when i say anything about <laughs> it but i don't think that that's a, that is a fucking problem and i who is he to tell her that she's gonna die alone i would if i was her i would have cussed his ass clean out well you could tell in the video that she clearly had confidence and self-esteem issues so right <clears throat> well i mean i'm i think one thing you said b is not going too deep into it Cause it's like on, on being like a hundred percent honest, it's a million different perspectives you could take on this. It's the perspective, it's the humanistic perspective of true. Who can tell you what about anything? You know what I'm saying? It's all about you and what you want to manifest into your life. I was just gonna say you can manifest just about anything. Right. I think with Brother Samuel's, my assumption, I should rather say, is he's speaking from a certain aspect of what some may call the game, the game of life. Um like my man AI said, the law of averages, you know what I'm saying? And things of the sort. The sister called in, you know, if from what I heard, you know, she had admiration for him. She respected his perspective, you know what I mean? And so she called, you know, basically to see what he thought. Yeah. And so to be honest with you, that's the first thing. That is just me. That's the first problem. You know, you're going to base, it sounds like, assuming, allegedly, but I mean, you're going to base your worth off of what somebody else thinks about you Mm -hmm. based on you respecting their platform. Now, the truth of the matter is from his perspective, you know, if you don't in those, in that type society, 
And those type of men that I believe he may be around or may be one of, you got to look a certain way, carry yourself a certain way, can't have this type of baggage, so on and so forth. It's all these stipulations and so on and so forth. So to me, he answering her is basing it off of that type knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you get what you seek. You know what I'm saying? This is what this man's opinion was about you based on his world, his knowledge, his views. And if we, if we be in 100% ugly truth, I respect that. If that's what you see, you know what I'm saying? But me personally, I would always say it's about what you want and what you want to do. You know, live your life to defy the eyes. Shit, this whole existence right now, this earth is a bunch of odds. Everything we talked about here is a bunch of odds. It's probably against you that's it. in some shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to shit on a man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not really into his show like that. But I will say just being an adult, if you call to get advice from somebody who has a certain thought process and a platform that you respect mm -hmm. and they, number, they size you up based on it, then you got the information that you wanted. But you know, get knowledge yourself and do better. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be me if you came to me. But the fact he said you can't say seven, that's deep. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. deep. That's On deep. a, uh, I mean, to them though. And, and, you know, shout out to, to Kevin Samuels. You know, he did. She knew what she was getting herself into. Right. Um, I don't necessarily agree with, with how he approached it. I mean, I'm just the kind of guy like, you don't know what's best for me or who are you to tell me that, these are only my options. Like, right. how do you know, bro? It's 7 billion people in the world. Right. You know? Right. And the fact that she is a six-figure earner, and, I, and I, I think people get really caught up on that six-figure preach statement, bro. Like, oh, I make six figures. Like, bro, six figures ain't it, bro. Is You still out here. You hustling. You still check the check if you not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got millionaires who believe if you really want to tell the truth, Millionaires, it's, it's not about being a millionaire. Can you stay a millionaire? Can yeah. you stay a hundred thousand there? Can you stay a hundred there? <laughs> yeah, and I'm, <laughs> you I'm got through, you know what I mean? I'm basing this conversation purely off. I, I'm assuming we're talking the low six figures, so 150 right. and under. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm not people, like, oh, I make 400 that well, bro. We're not talking about you because yeah. you're over the 250 mark or over the one about mark. the people who still have popcorn ceilings. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, I mean, shit, we ain't that far from that, like right. not to tell none of our right. business, but. Right. We do pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like, I, I feel you where people, it's all about perspective. But I think Harlem has said that a while ago, man. Like, are you going, is it love? Is it money? Are you mixing all of this up? Is your worth your paycheck? You know, the one thing I can say about the sister is that if she getting it from the dirt herself, that's very admirable. You know, if it's her own business and, you know, she's a hundred thousand and up person. Mm -hmm. But some of these guys that I know Brother Samuel was be talking about still got to say, yes, sir. I mean, these pet groomers are getting, and, 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 and he, he is not, he does not, nobody's exempt from, because he, he goes in like this on guys, girls, right. whoever, he talks to whoever crazy. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, he, he told her like, oh, well, I mean, you said that like you a Microsoft executive, like bro, a hundred thousand is a hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> it don't matter. Yo, on the humble, Harlem and I was talking earlier before the show started and I appreciate her, you know, for this, cause she was just asking me, you know how's work going and so on and so forth. And of course, you know, it's the ups and downs and all that. You know, I respect my, my line of work. You know, I do one of many things. But she pointed out, shoot, in this day and age, you better be happy you got something. Because shit, your ass could be making, I, to be honest, I think in a minute, if you're making 30000 a year, you're going to be a celebrity. <laughs> to, you know what I'm saying? And compared to what is starting to happen and I, people losing their employment. Crazy world, yeah. I feel like mindset is everything. So, right. in just sticking to the topic at hand, with this with this woman, in her mind, her mindset, her perspective is that she wants what she wants and she deserves it. Mm -hmm. She can attain it. Yes. Because if it doesn't happen for her or if it does happen and it falls apart, she still can provide for herself. Right. She mm -hmm. still, you know, is able to match or whatever the case may be. She could still take the man on a date and pay for it if that's what she mm -hmm. chooses to do. And I don't think that it's fair that this person, is he black? Kevin Samuels. Yeah. Yes, he's black. Okay. I don't think that it's fair that he took this opportunity to tear this black woman down. I don't think that that's okay, but that's some shit that we're comfortable with watching and laughing and like damn that's how he did her 
no, sir, you're a dick. Mm-hmm. And if she wants somebody who makes six figures, it, oh, he's fine, though. Oh, they just showed me a picture. He's he's handsome. I might call his show myself. Let him talk bad please, about me. Please call his <laughs> show. Oh, I can't please wait. Please I can't call. wait. Kevin, we got one for you, though. Please. <laughs> I'm tuning in. But I definitely feel like, you know, your her mindset is probably more powerful than anything else. And um, AI, you said she maybe had like some self esteem or you know some issues or whatever. I mean, shit, you want what you want. That was clear. That like was you know what I'm saying. You you want what you want, and you can't let somebody deter you from having goals and having standards. You know what I'm saying. Like if I was weak minded, the, all those comments that I received about being a gold digger and this and that, um, stop showing me pictures of this man <laughs> with this purse on. He damn sure couldn't tell me. You know what? Mindset is everything, perspective, and wh- whoever the sister is, I hope she finds her somebody making big bank, okay? Yeah. Because it is what it is. You want what you want. And if I want a man that can pay for my fucking brunch and booty and bacon, then oh fucking well. I'm going to say it, I'm going to manifest it, and it's going to happen. Right. Yeah, brunch be lit. Um, no, I think that uh, a, a, a piece I want to kind of touch on here is um, she, she referred – well, she didn't refer to herself as average. She kind of gave herself an average rating, and then he said, so average at best. Um, I think that the law of averages is, is is a big piece of this because, you know, if you feel, if you think, and if you're around average people, things, places, you're going to attract average people, things, places. Um, we can be honest and say that people that are more aesthetically pleasing are going to attract different people, have different opportunities. Mm-hmm. That's, that is proven. That's proven. Um you're going to probably make more money over time. Like all of these things are proven. And the thing about it is you, you have to, you have to, this is what, you know, Mr. Samuels couldn't tell you have to put yourself in another situation. You know how they say, if there's five millionaires in a room, you'll be the six. Right. If you know, you, your last five boyfriends or, or love interests were average. Guess what the six one's probably going to be like, you have to put yourself in a space mm. that is not average, but, you know, and I'm not even going say above average, but that is going to, you know, um, produce the outcome that, that you're wanting. I mean, half of this is just being in the right place at the right time. And, yeah. you know, like, if I'm at a hole in the wall, it's going to be hole in the wall people there yeah. generally. But, you know, if I enhance my surroundings, um, and then there's so many places to meet people. Like, I, I think he just didn't touch on a lot of key things. It's investing in yourself. You know, like you can, like you said, it's who you surround yourself with. Sometimes you have to invest in yourself in order to get the result that you're looking for from, you know, possibly even if it is just dating or meeting the right people. You Mm -hmm. know, I refuse to pay $10 a month to go work out at Planet Fitness or Club (laughs) Club Fitness or whatever. I'm going to pay the upper echelon of a gym membership where I'm going to rub elbows with people that I know could possibly take me some places. Return on investment. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a return on your investment. So I work out in front of I, I don't have time <laughs> and some people don't to work out that. with common no, people. But it, it's where you put yourself. The law of yeah. averages is real. I know people that do not believe in the they say, Oh, I can do whatever. That's not realistic. It's just not. Like there are gonna be some, some and that's in all caps, S O M E, some exceptions to every rule. Mm-hmm. But for the most part you were not a part of the 1%. You're probably not a part of the 10%. Like, you are, people always say, they, they use it when it's convenient. Oh, well, you are a product of your environment until they say, well, I mean, I think people should be able to do shut up. Yeah. How, you can't have it both ways. You don't have to remain stagnant. You you don't have to remain you stagnant. You can, you can definitely change your circumstances. That's something that I try to instill in, like, even my 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. You know, just because you go to this particular school with these particular type of people, that doesn't mean that that's who you have to surround yourself with and that's who you have to become. If you want to date a rich white man, you go to where the rich white man be at. Or you go to where the rich single white women are. And I'm telling you, the rich white men are there too. You know, it's, <laughs> you, have to, you have to do what you have to do to figure it out. Yeah. Just put it's all about there. you, your mindset. Don't you choose to manifest in your life? Yeah, because you can be whatever you want to be. 
You you could be whoever you want to be. Nasir Jones told us that. And you can manifest it into existence if you have the strong mindset to do so. I agree. I agree. And and you know, on that note, any final thoughts from you all? Any final thoughts? I just uh I just I was kind of running through this uh this little website real quick. And it turns out that Mr. Kevin Kelly is actually involved in a lawsuit with the restaurant owner in Houston that he was involved with. So I'm going to read this later. Oh, Lord. That he was involved. Huh? So Mr. <laughs> Kelly that owns Taste Kitchen in Dallas is apparently involved in some type of lawsuit with the restaurant owner that he was partnering with in Houston. Oh. So this is coming out now. Um, the plot thickens. Yeah, I'm going to read up on this and see what's going on. So I don't have any Jeez. details right now. I was giving you that beat that... I know I can. I heard. I heard that. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, not seriously. Y'all know this is a podcast. It's not. It's not a, a radio show. So we don't. We don't have music here. I'm gonna get my pencils. Please. And you know what? I might. I might drop a verse. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Um. We are gonna sign off. We appreciate you all. Episode 17. Commentary. Intellectual. Black. Versation. Um, we have some awesome interviews and special guests coming up. So um, you all make sure you tune in for all of that. I don't know if we're going to get in in 2020, but we we got some some good things lined up for the next year. Um, so we're going to teach you how to get your credit and student loans in order. We're going to talk about yep. some mental health. Um, what else? I got I got some we got some gossip girls coming every Do day. Do we? Yeah. Okay. I asked yeah. you what what they wanted to talk about. You wouldn't tell me. So, man, we'll talk in a minute. But it's it's it, it, that's gonna be a good one. That's okay. Gonna be a good I'm, one. I'm excited for that. Um. So you know. Oh, they can also check out our I guess like our guest feature on what was it vibes and vinyl vibes and vinyl shout out to vibes yeah. and vinyl yes, yes. Sir. that shout was out, that was out, fun i'm out. sure that you know we probably won't be invited back but <laughs> we had a really good time so no shout out they got uh, they're coming to join us so that that's one of our our, our special guests yeah for yeah. sure yeah we can't wait we can't wait ladies doing your thing they just hit um 500 followers on instagram so they were celebrating let's go yes, what's up congrats Shout congrats out. yes i was totally checking out i think her name is k ray mm -hmm. i was totally checking her out. she's so freaking cute yeah i was just kind of just looking at her the whole time if you look at the video <laughs> my eyes was just like looking at her but you know it's fine yeah yeah no shout out to those ladies um, y'all know where to find us at, man. Y'all got anything else that y'all know? Just I don't, you know. Y'all already know who this is, the one and only Harlem B. You can find me at the Interrupted Black Girl on Instagram. Cut his mic off. Cut it off. I had your background Ew. music. <laughs> That's hard. Y'all, y'all know where dope. to find Shad. Y'all know where to find Shad is on. It's on everything. DJ Allen I. Um, we out, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Have a good week. Peace. Big